Time's ticking down and you gotta be ready. We're moving forward, gotta hold steady. You can't wait to plan your great escape. Right, welcome to the people of Portland and beyond, episode 52. Today in studio with me is Timothy Reed. He's got an Instagram called Reed Films. How did you end up getting started in photography? Um, you know, you just kind of uh, pick something up as a hobby one time and you figure out, well, you're pretty good at it. And then uh, you just make it a passion and go for it. Uh, for me, it was about four years ago. Nice. Did you have any formal training? Nope. Everything I did was uh, self-taught YouTube videos, uh, influence from people that were better than me. <laughs> uh huh. Was there any particular YouTube channels that you liked, helped you, you think? Uh, Frono's Photography is one of my favorites. Um, I also watched a lot of the Adorama videos. It's another place that like sells cameras and gear. Nice. Do you think that camera phones are getting to a level where they're going to match like real cameras? I think for the for the sake of sharing and social media like um, Instagram and that kind of thing, I think that it's great to have a camera on you all the time. But when you compare the sensor, the size of a of a peanut compared to the size of well, a much fuller DSLR or a Mirrorless camera, uh -huh. you know, I think quality is quite a ways away still. What kind of camera do you like to use? Um, I have a Nikon D750, and it's a full frame professional grade camera. Nice. Do you also do video work or only camera stuff? So when I first started picking up the camera, I really actually was going to get into videography. Um, yeah. But I found that more uh, passion and fun was just stills. Okay. And do you ever do time lapse stuff? Uh, I haven't played around too much with it. Mostly when I do, it's with my iPhone. <laughs> yeah. I hear you on that. I've done stuff with my Android. Are you an Apple guy or Android, PC, Mac? Um, so I am an Apple guy. I use the Apple ecosystem. I'm probably one of the first, not first, but one of the few photographers that do 99% of their editing on my iPad. Okay. And it works really good when I use my iPhone, iPad, and Mac all synced together uh, with using Adobe Lightroom, which is the, the software that I use for mostly all my editing. And for post-production, what do you use? That as well? Yeah, yeah. post-production. Yep. <laughs> yep. So... Do you think Photoshop? I mean, that's probably the area that I need to work on most. Um, okay. Photoshop and myself have not, we haven't spent too much time together. <laughs> yeah. uh, another area that I can definitely work on for sure. But uh, there are YouTube channels that have great um, instructionals and videos. Yeah, nice. Uh, where were you raised? In Portland? Or? Yeah, Southeast Portland. Born and raised in, um, there was only a brief little time I was in Southeast Washington, but for the most part, all here. Nice. It's amazing how this place has changed. <laughs> yeah, how has it changed? Like, what are the most noticeable things? Well, I mean, it's a very popular place, and with that comes a lot of people that move here. And so, cost of living has gone up, value property has gone up. I remember my parents buying their first house when I was probably like six years old, and they, they purchased a little two bedroom, one bath for $28,000. <laughs> yeah. And that same house is probably worth like 300000 today. <laughs> okay. So, do you think that bubble is coming, like a housing bubble? Or? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Where do you think like is the most expensive part of Portland right now? That's a good question. You know, I know that Lake Oswego, Wilsonville, mm -hmm. Westland, Council Crest, all those areas are really probably the ritziest places in Portland or downtown. Do you ever shoot, shoot over in Lake Oswego? Um, not as much down there. I, I Most of my shooting's done in the southeast Portland, Troutdale, Vancouver. I shoot a lot over there. Okay. Um, I love that Fort Vancouver reserve area. Nice. And what do you do, like, in specific when you want to further improve your pictures? Is there any, like, special effects that you like to use? No, I just pay close attention to the settings I used. And when I pull them from the camera and import them onto my iPad, whatever I'm not happy with, I know what I can change. Yeah. Um, I did a portrait session last night, actually. Um, and it was really, really dark. And I pushed my camera to the absolute limits. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love my camera, but there are better cameras that shoot low light. But, you know, you can always go back and look and be like, oh, man, I should have done that. Yeah. Um, does it frustrate you that Instagram kind of limits the resolution on pictures? No, that part doesn't frustrate me. Uh, only because I don't put my um, 
my watermark on my photos. Okay. So if someone was to go to my Instagram, they'd see that there's no watermark. And, you know, if they were full resolution, people could quickly take them and share them as their own. Yeah. Which does happen a lot. My biggest frustration with Instagram is the algorithm. You know, it used to be time, you know, piece by piece. And now it's just, you know, Instagram choosing what it wants to show people. And it's that not be based fun. on popularity. Now. It is based on okay. Instagram thinks that a post is popular, then they'll share it. You know, okay. that to me is the biggest frustration. But Instagram yeah. to me is not as important as it is to some photographers. Yeah. I do it for the love and the passion of it. Yeah. Promotion mainly. Yeah. I have a business account on Instagram. So for it offers the ability to, to post sponsored posts, which I've chosen not to do. Mm. Um, I let my account just grow. And most of my, um, portrait work comes from a, a referral basis. So yeah, most I can of ask where you get your um, models from and stuff like that. Yeah, m almost all of them have been a referral based type of situation. I started with two or three in my circle, and then from two or three grew and grew and grew until I became a, a business out of it. Nice. Um, it's kind of funny. There's a lot of people that will look at um, uh, a lot of female photography, um, and a lot of girls are as aspiring models. Well. You know, a lot of them are really pretty, but you know, modeling jobs are actually few and far between. Yeah. And uh, but the pictures themselves make the girls look and feel good about themselves. Uh -huh. And so people um, will pay for professional grade photography so they can share on their Instagram accounts yeah. for the sake of likes, the sake of popularity. How often are you taking a model's photos and then later selling them for commercial work? I have actually never sold a model's photos for commercial work. Uh -huh. I've been paid by apparel companies mm -hmm. to shoot with models, and that is their own owned work, copyright free, that I've shot for them, for yeah. them to use on their w websites. They do that, so they're advertising their clothing, you're getting paid, they're getting paid. That's right, which is the perfect world. You know, there's a big fight on Instagram, who gets paid, the model or the photographer, but I think in a perfect world, both get paid by yeah. somebody else. Yeah, a different sponsor for sure. Would you ever go to like any photography events or anything like that? We No, there's, um, there's a few that we've been to, like Insta Meets is what I call them, where a group of photographers will come and hang out and we'll you know, get to know each other. It's a great community. You know, I've probably met more of my friends off of Instagram um, in that large circle group because of those Insta meets and those abilities to to catch up and share the love, passion for photography. Nice. Do you ever, like, did you ever find any hashtags um, through Portland? I don't know, like, inspirational or anything like that? There are some. There was one recent one that I kind of, I didn't fall in love with it, but it's a great one. It's Portland Model. Okay. Um, it's probably the best hashtag that I like because it shows the ability for people to share themselves. And a lot of people consider themselves models. It may not be, but, you know, it's kind of cool just to see people with that confidence level. Yeah, definitely. What's your favorite lens? Good question. Depends on what I'm shooting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in my bag, I always carry my 24 to 120 f4, which is a great all-around walking lens. Mm -hmm. I can use it for portraits if I choose to, but it's not my favorite lens for that. Um, and my favorite um, uh, portrait lens is my 85 millimeter 1.8 okay. Nikon lens. Do you feel like one day Instagram is going to actually upgrade to like 4K or something like that, though? I'm not sure what plans Instagram has, but I would assume that at some point it'll be um, a better platform than it is today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they, my biggest change I'd love to see them make is go from a five by four crop to its standard two by three, which is what cameras shoot. Yeah. Do you ever like try to crop something and it's just not working the way that their <laughs> dimensions are? Yeah. It's kind of funny. I catch myself, I'll go out and shoot like a landscape and I'll catch myself shooting a a five by four frame specifically for Instagram. Yeah. Like, why am I doing this? You know? <laughs> You're just limiting yourself. Right? Yeah. So what I'll do, you know, is I'll, I'll shoot a standard frame and then I'll crop it later on to fit the Instagram crop. But, yeah. but it's funny. I actually saw a lot of prints and um, more people want the standard size and then they want the five by four. Mm -hmm. Why do you choose the locations you do when you shoot? Uh, sometimes it's for um, uh, like a frame that I've seen on Instagram where I, I want to make my own version of it. Sometimes I self explore and like I'll go driving and be like, Oh, I love this frame. I want to go check, you know, snap it. Yeah. Uh, I'll go out and I'll document the uh, location so I can do it at sunset or prime. Do that. So I was actually shooting uh, portraits that morning and yeah. I was waiting for my client to show up 
and the sky was looking good. So I took a little walk down on the waterfront and just saw it. And I was like, I love the reflection of the light, which was coming from the east side of the state. And it looked really, really good. The purple sky that was there. Really. That was there. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. You usually think that you put some kind of effect on it, right? That's yeah, good. it's kind of fun. I'll, I'll change my Instagram uh, colors. So like my recent like nine posts have the similar golden oranges. And so I'll change it based on the time of year. Nice. And this photo underneath that or the third photo. Palace Fine Arts. Yeah, Palace Fine Arts. Did you do like a blur thing kind of at the bottom? That is a 30 second exposure. Nice. And so I got cloud movement. And um, because it was a little bit of a breeze, the trees are going to be a little bit blurry just because they're moving around a little bit. Mm. I like that. This part's clear and everything's kind of foggy around it. Yep. And where did you get involved with this model? With how did you get involved with her? A lot of them are just referrals. You know, she's seen my work and um, reached out to shoot one day, and and that's what happens a lot of times. I'll look at my Instagram uh, DMs and I'll yeah. be like, oh. There's a message from somebody that wants to. Sometimes it depends on the slew of businesses that I work with on a regular basis that um, that like will look at the models that I've shot with and request them specifically to shoot their apparel. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I'll I'll get a group of individuals around, you know. And or you I I do often just go somewhere to take photos. Mm -hmm. uh, that day we were hoping it, um, for a really colorful sunset. I use a program on my iPhone that predicts when there's supposed to be color in the sky. Really, and that particular day was supposed to be really colorful, but over Mount St. Helens was mm -hmm. not. <laughs> uh, what program is that? Um, it's sunsetwx.com. That was really cool. Yeah, it's really helpful. Not always accurate, but where did you get the idea to define it? Like, did it just like looking through photography apps and stuff? <laughs> so it's good. For the industry. Absolutely, can't for you sure. like a solo. Guy. I mean, you can, but it might take you a lot longer to figure stuff You're out. Not gonna learn <laughs> stuff, right? Yeah, uh, it was my idea, but yeah, she she <laughs> nailed she it. <laughs> She, uh, she got cold. She got splashed a few times. I got some good photos of her face reaction. <laughs> nice. Do you have a Patreon? I do not. I have never had an uh, inclination to uh, sell my work. One of the people that were on my Instagram was following you. Sammy Ann Photography. You ever work with her? Mm -mm. Yeah. She was on a few episodes ago. Do you think you'll ever, do you have a 4K TV? I do have a 4K <laughs> TV. <laughs> so you're a technology guy kind of i work my nine to five job is a i work in a technology industry nice oh really what what kind of job is that i work in communications at at&t awesome and do you think you're gonna get an 8k tv when it comes out uh i might wait for that technology to perfect a little bit mm -hmm. uh it's interesting to see how fast things move and then technology will come out and then they'll push it and then all of a sudden, you know, it fails. I remember uh, a 3D phone that came out not too long ago, and it was a, a terrible, terrible phone. <laughs> one of the worst things. But they all thought it was the coolest new technology to come out, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it was not. <laughs> 3D is very frustrating. I yeah. Mean, I've heard holographics, the next big thing that come out, holographic phones. Okay. That was, would be cool. That would be pretty rad. You know, the thing of like Iron Man, where he's like got this computer set up, and he's able to interact with the display that's popped up. I mean, if it looks like Obi Kenobi, man. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these surgeons are using that kind of programming for for doing work on people, using gloves and then being able to like yeah. virtual. They were kind of saying VR is the future with that, but hologram seems better because you don't have to wear this thing on your face. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> seems a little more futuristic, it's like real VR. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever tried VR? Uh, only in the line of work that I do. It wasn't my favorite experience. I'm actually, I'm not a video game guy at all. Yeah. I don't like video games. Uh, when Didn't I was, grow up playing them? I did, Nintendo? actually. I did, straight up, right? Yeah. Like Tyson's Punch-Out? No, no, not that <laughs> one. So I was like Mario, Duck Hunt, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. The uh, light gun. And then Donkey Kong came out, revolutionized the video games, in my opinion. The graphics on that were amazing. Nice. Uh, but uh, after all that, when first-person shooters came out, like... Um, Oh, Medal of Honor. I'm sure you remember that game. I started getting really dizzy. I'd play the game and be like, something's not right. And so ever since first person shooters are like a very popular game, mm. I just couldn't play them. I just my, I just get like nauseated and I was like, forget this. And I yeah. just set the games down. I kind of hated it when 50% of the games coming out were, were first person shooters. Yeah. Like, What's going on? <laughs> That's just not what I want to do. Yeah. I like side scrolling. I like, you know, 
above shots and stuff. That's us old school, man. These these young guys, these don't, yeah. they don't know anymore. Now they're, they're just doing the battle royale. <laughs> That's right. And I'm like, I'm never going to win this. <laughs> yeah. Even at Tetris, I got third place once. I'm like, that was like a miracle. Oh, that's still my game of choice on my phone. Oh, Tetris. I love Tetris. <laughs> I have Tetris uh, 99 for Switch, and there's like a Battle Royale mode. And I get my ass whooped every time. Every time. <laughs> my friend's so good at it, and I'm jealous. He's visiting from New York soon. <laughs> Gosh, man, video games have changed so much. But I think, you know, the graphics are amazing. If they can do that. Mm. make them look so realistic i can imagine what's gonna happen soon you know yeah and they're even coming out with video games like this new one came out called dreams and you could just develop a video game within the video game itself yeah is that the one for sega saturn sega saturn no, just kidding. <laughs> you remember that game there was a game called dreams for sega saturn you fly no. around oh man it was a brilliant game you had the saturn i did for a, a short i was like one of the like five kids that had a sega saturn Super hardcore gamer back then <laughs> <laughs> back then yeah, yeah. I, I set video games down a long time ago now i just get That's out good man it distracts you so much it does you know i've seen a lot of people video games just ruin their, their relationships or lives and tv man you watching it sucked in any tv shows right now no no game of yeah, thrones is over so i'm done that yeah <laughs> just gotta stay away from that especially when you have a trade like photography or music because then you're going to be like too busy ingesting material than actually making the material yourself. Absolutely. I a hundred percent agree. Being creative and, and making art is way better than, than taking it all in. But you know, there's balance. Yeah. There's people that can do both. For sure. There's people that are, you know, YouTubers that just thrive off other people's content, you know, which I don't find satisfying, but they do. No, one of the, actually one of my biggest influences on, uh, for a YouTube channel, um, person, um, is Devin Supertramp, mm -hmm. you know, when he first started take, making uh, nature videos, not his like fun ones, but his his nature videos and making those. That's what actually inspired me to start videography and getting a camera. First bought a GoPro, um, started with that. Yeah, uh, I remember hiking Mount St. Helens with my GoPro and trying to make a cool video out of it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what a... F um... What I was going to ask was, do you ever submit material to like photo contests or anything? Do you ever hear of this app called Fope? Uh, I've never heard of that app. I've submitted a couple contests and I, I've won both times. I, for whatever nice. reason, I just, I don't, I don't know, I either don't have time or don't think of it. There's been quite a few um, suggestions of my followers that they've said, you should submit something. Mm -hmm. And it happened twice and I won both times. Nice. That wasn't anything big, but two for two. Then why do you want to mess up those odds? <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it for the winnings. I don't do it for the money. I do it for the fun. Yeah. So it's more of an artistic thing when it comes to photography, not about money. Yeah. I mean, I definitely have like my own business. You know, um, yeah. my biggest income is my wedding photography, um, that mm -hmm. and um, portrait sessions. But how do you get the wedding photography gigs? Well, actually, last year I did a um, a booth at the Women's Expo. Yeah, and that produced um, a couple, and then I did a couple trade shows. I did one that the Gresham Art Festival. Okay, um, I had a booth set up there, and then there was another one at a cafe in Vancouver that I did. Well, both all three of them have produced weddings. Nice. Um, I'll just pass out my cards. So half my booth is landscape; the other half of it is focused on portrait wedding photography. Okay. So people walk up and look at my landscape and be like, oh, you do this? And I'm like, yeah, I also do portraits and weddings. And that turns into a conversation, which yeah. turns into a business card being passed out, which turns into a wedding later on. Yeah. How <laughs> many business cards do you bring into the wedding usually? Into the wedding? Yeah. I'll keep a stack in my in my, in my my bag yeah, and I'll pass idea. out a few. People will tap me on the shoulder and be like, hey, how much do you charge? Yeah, you got to do that. I'm a musician. I don't bring business cards and I got to do that when I play weddings and birthday parties. People a lot of like they get through gig masters. Yeah. If you have uh, a personality that you can have a conversation with somebody that, mm -hmm. you know, if people like you, they'll hire you. You may not even have the best work out there, but if people like you, they'll hire you. Yeah. And you hold on 10 business cards. You might get one guy that follows up and that's worth it. Right Absolutely. Now. I remember uh, in my Vancouver trade show, I had one lady who was getting married like in two or three months and she didn't have a photographer yet, yeah. which is short term. Most people hire their photographer about a year out. Okay. And uh, she came up to me and she's like, well, I'm getting married. Or she had a friend that was getting married. That's what it was. And she's, I'm going to go get him, bring him down. So they brought the couple down and we just had a conversation, talked about it and hired me on the spot. 
Nice. And then that turned into that lady's wedding a year later. And now I'm doing her daughter's wedding. Oh, no. Yeah. And so it's just, it's fun, you know, being able to have now these families that are now considered my family. Yeah. You know, doing all their portraits. It also means more to you then. Yeah, you know absolutely. Them. And it's or way more comfortable, you know, when you're shooting with somebody oh, yeah. that, you know, it's totally just different. meeting a new person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anxiety. Awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. What's something that you wish you knew early on as a photographer that Mm, I kind of wish I jumped jump on the um, the photography game a long time ago, mm. but um, for a long time I was really into um, uh, fitness, and so you know, that, I mean, I've gone through stages in my life. But photography had its place when I started. Um, I kind of wish I had jumped on the Instagram slash social media game just a little bit earlier. Yeah, it seems like a lot of these people that have a ton of followers get great sponsors from companies like Sony and Nikon, mm -hmm. you know, Canon. Yeah. It, it, not that the following matters to me, but the following represents possibly sponsorships in the future. Mm -hmm. So my, my goal is to continue growing my account, of, of course. You know, it's not about the number, but. Yeah. Vincent Van Gogh died penniless. Do you think he succeeded at life? Yeah, I mean, he's he's a legacy. People know him, you yeah. know. I mean, part of, like, my photography is when I die, it's still going to be there. Yeah. People will be able to go back and be like, oh. That was really good work, you know. There's a guy that I used to follow, and he no longer is around, but his account still is online. Yeah. And I will often go back and check his work, and I don't know. It's just kind of cool to be able to see what someone has produced, even though they're gone. Yeah, absolutely. I was just wondering, like, accounts from 20 years ago, I hope there's a way that Instagram can highlight these accounts, you know? Yeah, that'd be really cool. Really I don't cool. know how they're going to do it, but maybe they should do, like, a flashbacks or something and just, mm -hmm. like, make you watch a story or something of your friends. I don't know. Facebook does that. So They do. And there's, I mean, it's kind of sad. There's a lot of people now that you know, Facebook's been around long enough that there's a lot of deceased accounts. Yeah. You know, and some people will deactivate them. I've known, like, family and relatives and friends that have had people pass away, and they, they go in there and try to deactivate the account. But right. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of cool. I don't know cool. why. Yeah, I don't either. It's like I'd a be nice kinda, time capsule. It is. And it'd be nice to be able to just mark it as, you know, deceased or whatever and just have memories. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be kind of a cool way to highlight. I don't think any features. of them should ever be. I don't think they ever do get deleted from the cloud, truly. I mean, the government, NSA, and all I'm that. I'm sure it's, yeah, some server stored somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I saw that you made a post on Instagram, made me think you're a Queen or a Highlander fan. Because you said, who wants to live forever in one of the posts? <laughs> well, definitely Highlander over okay. Queen. But that song actually was, the, I was listening to that music probably when I made that caption or post. Yeah. Uh, most of my captions are music inspired. Nice. So I'll be listening to a song in my vehicle when I'm driving to uh, either work or to a shoot. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just be listening to the lyrics and something will catch my, my mind and I'll like, that matches that photo. Yeah. So if you go through the captions on my photos, most of them are music inspired. Does immortality fascinate you? Hmm. I don't know about immortality. Yeah. I mean, Highlander is kind of a, a cool movie. Yeah. I love that movie. I was going to say the TV show or the movie. Do you <laughs> the think? movie. The, the, the movie. No Duncan McLeod for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a classic, though. I remember my aunt and my uncle really being in the Highlander series. <laughs> yeah. Then I tried to go back and watch it the first season. I was like, this is so cheesed out. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's definitely some movies from my childhood that have stayed in my brain for a long time yeah, when i was younger the movie tremors scared the crap out of me <laughs> tremors yeah. yeah you remember the big worms that would eat people <laughs> yeah oh man <laughs> what's the scariest movie you've ever seen that'd probably be it right there really? i mean for the i think i was time. terrified too yeah i mean another one was uh the movie jurassic park when it first came out the original one yeah. i remember being pretty young and i was in the theater my mom had to take me out of the theater because i was crying i was scared to death right about the part the tyrannosaurus rex you know broke out of the fence and was about to eat the the you know the guy in the toilet yeah oh man oh yeah i remember I, that. I had to leave that scene <laughs> <laughs> Where did you do this shoot right here where the girls in a set of nine tubes using like the middle tube? That's right next to Union Station, right down the street. Wow. How did you? And, you know, I've seen that before, but, yeah. you know, I rolled up, I kind of forgot about them. And that was just the meeting place that we just happened to set, you yeah. know, for our portrait session that day. And I was like, oh, that'd be super cool. Let's just do it. And it just came to me like, oh, yeah, let's shoot there. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of the green tubes in Super Mario Brothers. Yep, that is exactly what I thought too. Yep. <laughs> nice. Hey, Mr. Mario, he's a plumber after all. Yeah. This shot is incredible. Where were you for different? So I saw with the Lombard Street, this is the street, uh, which is the curvy part there in the top right corner. Yeah. And I made it that part of the frame. 
Wow. Most people will just zoom in as close as they can on that curvy straight to do okay. the long exposure. Yeah. But I wanted to highlight the buildings that I thought were just as equally cool. Yeah, that is awesome. What street is that called? Lombard Street nice. in San Francisco. Wild Bay Area. <laughs> yeah. Cool. We just drove around to shoot. And the trolley one was one of my favorites. We spent two hours just tracing around trolleys, nice. trying not to get killed by cars. Yeah, that's cool. I heard there's a feces problem. Is that true? In it's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a pretty clean city, actually. You know, we're comparing to like downtown Portland, where, uh -huh. you know, the homeless population oh, yeah. is crazy. You get to here. catch a whiff of that, that smell and <laughs> yeah. oh. peed on the street. Yeah, that's a nice downtown Portland <laughs> fragrance. Yeah. Like every time light come through the forest quite like i'm out of fog it is like you walk into this place and you're like is this real is this really happening to me right and you know i had friends that just were down there a few uh, a few days ago yeah and they had um, very similar conditions the only difference is the rhododendrons were in bloom and okay. we had gotten down there my friend jake and i i had just gotten down there like a little bit too early mm. but we're not sad we got some great shots yeah it's beautiful yeah, the the guys at Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival are so so kind um, to to photographers. They they allow um, people in early to take portraits. And... The farms where they have like flowers like that. Oh yeah, and they they know what people are going there for, which yeah. is you know for the photography and for yeah. the experience of being able to walk through the fields. Um, there's a lavender field in Portland. It's not so friendly. Okay, uh, I'd love to go there, but they don't appreciate photographers at all. I bet you people have tried to shoot there without his permission. And got oh, absolutely. You know, uh -huh. unfortunately, they break the rules and makes it so, you know, other people can't enjoy it. But yeah, this is a rose field. Nope. Same tulip field, just yeah. a different morning. Got like every color, man. That's guys. Are good. They do. They have a mixture of everything. That's awesome. And then I'll be going to the Palouse, which is that area there in eastern Washington wow. in two weeks. Looking forward to going out there with my friend Jake to do some scouting for his workshop and taking some photos. Did you know this pilot on this plane? No, but he clearly knows photographers take pictures because he shows off quite often. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And the hot air balloon, where did that come from? So every, almost every morning, they get good conditions at the tulip fields. The, um, the They allow the hot air balloons to come in and the hot air balloons will um, uh, have customers that want to take rides. Nice. And so they go up every morning, and it's nice to be able to capture them if it, they go up just over the right spot. Have you ever done it? Like I have, yeah. So um, <laughs> a few years back in Arizona, uh, we took a ride and it almost died, actually. they It was really windy the day before. Yeah. We went up, and uh, in Arizona, they can have unexpected desert winds. Mm -hmm. And we were about to, to come down. And, you know, you can't really control a hot air balloon. It can go up, it can go down. Right. But you can't really control it. And the guy on the ground radios into the pilot. And he's like, the winds are picking up. You might want to set it down real soon. So he finds us a plateau. And an, I'm not even kidding. We're about 20 feet from the ground. Yeah. And this thing is coming in like this. And all of a sudden, the gust of wind picks up. Ask it, praying we don't die. Are you good um, on hot air balloons? Yeah, I think I'm good. I think that's done for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're one and done. But, you know, that was on my bucket list. So yeah, cross that one off. That's crazy. Man. what's your favorite place to eat in portland oh man there's so many good spots i'm on a special diet don't don't hate me but i'm, I'm doing keto so it kind of limits mm -hmm. kind of limits the uh, places you can go eat but when oh, i can yeah. eat what i want to eat mm -hmm. um i love there's a place in gresham it's called mojave it's a little mexican restaurant i love that place um man there's so many good places i love the food carts get great variety of, of food down here i used to work downtown portland on third and we'd walk over and just get the food carts remember when brunch box had a food cart i don't remember going to that one but there what was the, there was like um a burrito one that was really good it's been so long since i worked downtown i can't remember all the names mm. but uh recently just ate at one of the greek ones it was really good too nice did you ever try angelina's greek heroes no was it good it's a great, I mean, it's only at uh, Portland Saturday Market, and they mm. also have a place by the train station on 1st. I'll check it out, man. Yeah. I like Hen here. Henry's is really good. 12th. What is it? Henry's on 12th. What do they have? Henry's Tavern. Okay. It's just, you know, great, just overall pub food, but they're really good. Mm. Uh, my friend Kevin owns Backwoods Brewery. They just opened up their their brew pub downtown. Any beers you like over there? Oh, their Copper Line's really good. Um, during the holiday season, he'll have the Pecan Porter. So if you like beer... 
uh, my friend Kevin's place downtown Portland, Backwoods Brewery. Mm. Uh, you got to check it out. It's really good food. Do wood fire pizza, pub fair. Oh. Really good. Nice. I'm from New York, so I'm pretty picky about that. that Man, if good. you like beer, he's got a little bit of everything. They'll let you try it. Okay. And uh, they're just down the street. Got any amber beers over there? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The Copper Line's an amber. That's something I've preferred when I came to Portland. I was like, I really like the ambers here. Yeah. They have a great variety. I'm more of a Pilsner or like a like a, a lager, white lager. Mm. That's my flavor. I, I like a lot of uh, Mexican beers. Okay. Do you have a favorite type of exercise? Mm, you know, I tried um, CrossFit once and I did that for like eight months. Yeah. You know, it was really effective. It taught me a lot about like Olympic lifting, but I just like to go to the gym and lift weights, just regular old lifting weights. Okay. And uh, no one likes cardio, but you got to do it into your routine anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I have this recumbent bike over there, but just to get a little extra movement in the morning. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. I try to use it. I don't end up using it a lot of the time. <laughs> it just sits there collecting dust. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather spend a day at the beach or poolside? Beach. Definitely the beach. Yeah. Um, um, not much for pools. Mm -hmm. I don't like the smell of chlorine. It's not my favorite smell. And normally there's a bunch of rowdy people. <laughs> yeah. If you could have any exotic animal as a pet, what would it be? Oh, man. I don't like keeping pets. I'll be real honest. Yeah. I think pets belong in the wild. I mean, I, I believe animals belong in the wild. Mm -hmm. I'm a dog person by nature. I love cats. Yeah. Your cat's adorable. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I, when I was younger, I had a piranha. Wow. A, yeah. And I fed it goldfish. No one better hate me for that. I was young. Uh, <laughs> but that was probably the most exotic animal I've ever owned. Nice. Uh, do you have any pet peeves? Bad drivers, people from whoever, you know, come into Portland. I mean, Portland drivers can be bad, but yeah, it just it, people in the left lane. Look, if you're not passing somebody, get over, you know, like I'm a fast driver just by nature. Uh -huh. But I, that's my pet peeve is bad drivers for mm -hmm. sure. Hands down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate that. What's your death row meal? Oh, man. Good question. Probably a whole Costco pecan pie. Nice. And probably some barbecue. Nice. Death row meal. Jeez. <laughs> Such a morbid thought. Here, what's the last meal you're going to eat in your life? Yeah, let's follow that with your favorite ice cream topping. Oh, man. You're throwing out all these weird date questions. No, it's <laughs> kidding. <laughs> um, I don't know. Caramel, probably. I like caramel. Caramel is great. That's what I go to when I get something from Starbucks or something like that. Even though I like black. I like black coffee. That's my thing. I'm a big nice. Stumptown fan. Stumptown. If you notice in my uh, bio and my Instagram, it says I'm a coffee addict. That is a true statement. I can't live without coffee. But Stumptown is my favorite. I've also come to like Black Rock quite a lot. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of my clients work at Black Rock. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, but yeah, love coffee. Have you been in Tillamook Cheese Factory? Oh, I have. Yeah, we used to uh, visit that place quite often. My family was a big fan of those cheese curds. Oh, yeah, those are the best. Got to eat them within 24 hours. Oh, for sure. Got to yeah. be squishy. It's like we had a routine. You go to the cheese factory, you get your cheese curds, your beef sticks, and your, your Triscuit crackers. Ice cream at the end. And then, you, no, you have the ice cream first. Oh, really? The other stuff's for the road, you know? Yeah. Oh, that that was sense. like a routine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you into podcasts at all? You know, I used to be really um, heavy into like the church scene. And uh, when I was, I listened to a lot of my favorite teachers and pastors. Yeah. Um, but I haven't been part of that scene for a long time. And so I kind of fell out of the podcast thing. But there's still a lot of people that subscribe and listen. Um, one of my favorite photographers is uh, Nick Page. Okay. And he's a great YouTube podcast guy. Um, he's got some great content. I've learned a lot from his stuff. Um so as far as like in the realm of podcasts, there's still a lot of great content out there. Are you still religious? Yeah, I still believe in God. Nice. You yeah. still do like the praying and go to church every once in a while? I go to church every once in a while. Uh, definitely still uh, talk to God. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's not always great conversation, but mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. I'm watching this show called Lucifer. It's reminding me of my church days. Yeah, I think everybody's gone to church at least once or twice. Not everyone has a great experience, but it seems like it's it's necessary background or to understand the world more. I don't know. I hundred percent agree. You know, there's a lot of people that have never even heard of God. But, <laughs> you know, but for the most part, yeah. I think everybody has heard of God or at least yeah. Jesus. You know, not Pretty everyone popular. believes. 
in that, but you know, everyone's got their own opinion. I just know that my personal background, um, being that I am, um, that I do believe in God, it's like, I know it's helped me live a better life. Yeah. It teaches people things. Yeah. It's not necessarily, do you believe everything that's written in the Bible to the written word or do you just kind of believe in being a good person, you know? Yeah. I think in order to define that, you have to have some sort of experiences in life that I don't know, lead you to God, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. You can't just believe just to believe. I think everyone needs to have an experience. Yeah. And some people have never had one. And I think that makes it harder to believe in a in an entity, whether that whatever that might be. Yeah. Have you ever speak in tongues? If you want to call it that. Yeah, what do you call it? <laughs> <laughs> whatever you call it. When I was a, in youth group a long time ago, we went to a youth group conference in uh, in Canada. Yeah. And I remember um I remember thinking that I was speaking in tongues back then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just gibberish. I'm not sure, but yeah, I would. That's what I heard when only in the main church, not in like Sunday school or anything like that. But. Yeah, I actually used to be on the worship team for the church. I played bass guitar. Really? Yeah, I played it for almost oh uh, gosh, twelve, thirteen years. My brother, his first job, he worked at Burgerville, okay. and he bought himself a guitar. His second paycheck, he bought me a bass guitar. So right. him and I would jam out, and then um, we were going to the same church, and uh, they needed some you know, some people to be on the worship team. So they asked my brother and I to play. And so him and I played together. It was a lot of fun, nice. but I love that instrument. There's a lot of power behind it. Now I love the cello. It's like my favorite instrument. You play still? I play the bass guitar still nice. occasionally. Uh, I haven't probably picked it up in a few years, but. How long did you play the bass guitar? Like about 13, 14 years. Wow. Yeah. Do you ever want to do some recording? Have you over here? <laughs> <laughs> Just jam out session. Yeah. Oh, my fingers probably wouldn't appreciate that. I have a guitar hanging up in my room, and uh, so I'll pick that up occasionally and nice. play. My mom used to sing us John Denver around Christmas so time. <laughs> yeah. What kind of guitar? It's a Corona. It's a Canada brand. She bought it when she was on her honeymoon mm -hmm. um, a long, long time ago, and she's just had it in the family ever since, and she gave it to me for my high school graduation. And I'll tell you what, man, it is the nicest guitar. That's I don't remember cool. what she paid for. It wasn't a lot. That thing never goes out of tune. And you know how guitars can be. They can hang on a wall and go out of tune in like a day. Oh, this yeah. guitar, I could pick it up every four or five months and the thing That's still awesome. sounds like it's in tune. I'm like, what in the world is this is like the best instrument ever. Yeah. It's like my Martin DCME <laughs> guitar. I've had it since 2002 and I've beaten the crap out of it, but it always stays in tune. <laughs> yeah, like this is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Unlike this Philippines guitar behind you, which is it it's a nice it. showpiece, but it plays like crap. Oh, it's I 20 like that, bucks. That blue color though is nice. It's a nice blue color. <laughs> And, then, and one day I was like, I need to have a background for the podcast. And that guitar is perfect. It works great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was quite musical. You know, it's funny. I think artistic people in general um, will find passion in different things, but they're artistic in, in nature. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that most people don't know about me is that I was an apprentice to a tattoo artist for about three months. Wow. And I've always loved drawing. And I started drawing my own tattoo work. And um, my... Uh, I have some friends that have some pieces that I've drawn for them on them, mm -hmm. but uh, I was going to do that. That was like before photography. I was I was drawing and yeah. becoming a tattoo artist, but for, I wasn't very good. I'll be real honest. Like it wasn't like I I looked at my work comparing it to his work, and I was like, yeah. oh man, I suck. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, who did that work with the trees right in your arm? That's at, amazing. My friend Alonzo. He uh, he um, runs DVC Tattoo with his buddy Aaron. Yeah. And he used to come over to my house and just do all my work. So my left arm is his older stuff. This is his newer stuff. Imagine the trees from Twin Peaks, man. So cool. Yeah, they, he did a good job, man. I get a lot of compliments on it. I'm happy with the shading. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good tattoo artist for sure. Nice. So have you ever disliked something and then changed your mind later? People? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think for the most part, when it comes down to it, um, well, okay. So here's a perfect example. Yeah. Uh, around Christmas time, I went and bought a Sony camera. Okay. Thinking it was going to be the greatest thing I've ever purchased. Thinking mm -hmm. it was going to be the most bomb for portraits. And I went out and shot with it. Um, I did a portrait session with uh, one of the gals I work with. And it just had the worst chromatic aberration, which is like a glow behind somebody, like a purple haze. I've never seen anything worse. And wow. I was shooting with a Sony lens and the Sony body. I'm like, okay, I don't know what the hype's about. Uh, maybe it's just this camera. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it again. But I was like, I loved it and I hated it immediately. Did any of the pictures ever make it to Instagram? Even? Yeah, I have. Uh, if you go a little bit further down, you know, yeah. I used to have another account. Um, I shut it down. 
Uh, but on this account, I'm pretty certain I have one. Uh, right, go back up. The one with she's stretching right there. Okay. This that, one? that one there, that was shot on that nice. Sony. Yeah, okay. It's tight. I mean, I'll tell you, the focus on a Sony lens is a beautiful. I shot that at 1.8. Okay. Um, which normally on my Nikon, I'd have to shoot at like 2.2 yeah. to get as sharp full body image like that. But nope, that 1.8 nailed it. How many megapixels? It was a lot. That particular one was an A7R Type 3, and I feel like it was like 36, something like that. Okay. And that was the only one that did this one or anything? No, I think the one I just showed you. Okay. I think that's the only image I have from that shoot that was shot with that camera. Did you do like group photo sessions? Like, would you ever do a yoga session? Like, Oh, yeah. I've done all kinds of stuff that doesn't make it to my Instagram. I've shot people in a gym before, the fitness shoots. Um, just stuff doesn't always make it to my Instagram. Do some people request to do just like a private collection? No, post? people people pay me to shoot all kinds wow. of weird stuff. I once at the <laughs> Portland Women's Expo, this is a true story. Yeah. I had a, a lady come up and she was like, hey, have you ever done nude photography? Yeah. And I was like, mm, not really. What do you want? And she was like, oh, well, me and my lover, we want to get some pictures together. Yeah. And I was like, okay is he here uh -huh. oh, no she is not here <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't do for the art part of it <laughs> would that would be more art for you or maybe? no that would definitely be the business part of it for yeah. me <laughs> for but sure. you know it is what it is i was gonna ask how have ever women been uncomfortable and you have to like comfort them but like listen you don't have anything to worry about i'm a professional there was shot with the sony too okay nice this was referral as well yep nice and what did she use these photos for? What did you, did you have on Instagram? That um, also, I just needed some fitness shoot uh, uh -huh. portfolio work. Was it a trade thing? She paid you? Good. <laughs> that that particular shoot was a trade, and I don't do that very often. Okay. Most of my work is paid. Okay, nice. For one, folio for two. Okay. Or if it's a piece of clothing that I need worn for some sort of promotional advertising. All right. Would you or if I travel. Mm -hmm. at that and i need to get yeah. good as an image just sitting in your archives when it's not being yeah you have so many photos i'd say just submit everything see if it hits you know yeah you could sell three photos for like 75 bucks for sure i guess it's t set by set yeah but i'll sell prints you know and that's like my favorite thing to do yeah okay. the guy on top and he's got these uh led strips around a little tube mm -hmm. and we'd light them up and he'd just twirl them slowly on a 30 second exposure. And so as he's twirling, he's making these really cool designs and the camera's capturing that light. It's a pretty sweet Christmas Eve. Yeah. That was probably one of my favorite pictures I took from that trip. And this is called the PNW bus? Yeah, it actually has a name, the PNW bus. <laughs> <laughs> they what moved it? it. It used to be um, it used to be somewhere else. They have a different location next to a park. It's actually a little more easy found now. But it's like a tourist location. What is it? <laughs> it probably is now. Okay. <laughs> so it's like somewhere. You're just it's like, just on the side of the road. You can like uh, drive by and be like, oh, there's the bus. You know, it doesn't go anywhere. It has no wheels. Nice colors. Yeah, it's been all tagged up with graffiti on the inside and out. There was a guy that was shooting along with us. We never met him before. Yeah. Another photographer. And he had some really cool, like, green glow sticks. Yeah. And he had put them inside the bus, and that's what created that really cool glow on the on the inside. And you must have done an exposure because this right here, right? Yeah. Well, 30 seconds will bring out the stars. What was that? A shooting star? Or no, it's probably a plane. That's awesome. I that's actually it. like it. A lot of people actually Photoshop the plane streaks oh, out. And so I'm like, that's I'm like, cool. That adds a really cool character to it. Yeah, it shows that something was going on. It yep. shows you like the time that passed, you know? That's right. That's so cool. Oh, this is a famous shooting location, correct? Yeah. Everyone knows Haystack Rock. All right. Nice. Or Cannon Beach, whichever that yeah. one. Yeah. How often do you go out there? Um, not super often. I probably try to get out to the coastline, you know, somewhere along the coast once every month. You ever shoot at Multnomah Falls? Oh, yeah. You know, everyone's got to take those pictures. It's yeah. not my favorite location to shoot because you have to get out there really early so you don't photograph 100 people. Yeah. Have you shot there before the fire and after? I have. Um, I, I couldn't tell a whole lot of difference. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, my favorite picture that I ever took at Multnomah Falls was when the ice storm hit two years ago. Yeah. And I got it. Um, it was a really frozen image. I actually printed it out like massive. I printed a 30 by 20 of it. Uh -huh. And it's one of my favorite pictures. Nice. And you shot in Death Valley. Yeah, I've been there a few times. That's cool, man. Every time I shoot there. The I lowest always... point on earth. Yeah. What was that like? 
it uh, it's salty. Okay. And <laughs> you get thirsty often. Right. <laughs> but it's fun. Last time I was there, it was really windy. So it's like hard to breathe in the high points of the earth. Does that mean it's easier to breathe in the yeah, low it parts? It makes sense, but it's still very dry. True that. <laughs> So it's one of the coolest shoots, but was it hot? Yeah. <laughs> was it hot at all? It, it was warm that day. Okay. It was, I mean, she shot in a bikini earlier in the day. Mm. So it was warm enough for that. Yeah, for sure. Bottom. Yeah, when the water smooths out, you get the reflection in and yeah, the glow of the, the industrial area back there. Very cool. So you just like drive around and then you're like, I want to shoot here. Is that how you choose these locations sometimes? Sometimes. It depends. Um, if there's a, an image, like that one was a drive and shoot. Just driving, I, I slammed on my brakes. The person behind me probably almost hit me, but <laughs> I, had to, I had to get the shot. Nice. Um, you know, but there are places that are famous, you know, that you drive to specifically to capture an image. It's also cool when you just, you found it. You're like, this is on the side of the road and that looks awesome. Yep. That's one of my favorite photographs because they're not, you know they're not well known it's like there are places on instagram for instance that are well well known you're like okay i've seen this image a hundred times you know yeah uh, and those aren't ones that i try to go after often unless i'm visiting a new location traveling somewhere yeah like i had plans to go to new york um uh in a few weeks and i chose um not to for sake of money but yeah um the dumbo is what it's called and i think it's just one of the bridges out in the brooklyn area and okay. it's a very popular shot but i really want it you know yeah but there are times where it's like you know, you go because you want that shot. Yeah, I agree. You did snowboarding shoot? Is that right? I did. So um, she requested a graduation photo wow. shoot. And I said, what did you have in mind? And she's like, well, I snowboard. You want to go up to Timberline? I'm like, I'm down. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's one of my favorites. I love that portrait. Is that, do you do action shots like this often? I do. You know, I had a guy ask me the other day to do some sporting event stuff, and I don't have the right equipment for a sporting event. I yeah. Don't, I don't have. So in the world of lenses, they have what we call fast lenses and slow lenses. Okay. And um, the fast lenses are super expensive. Like you can get a, a 500 millimeter, you know, fast lens for probably like six to $7,000. Yeah. Uh, I have a 300 millimeter slow lens and it was like 500 bucks, <laughs> uh -huh. but it's not fast enough to do like sporting events where you have, you know, balls moving, guys running, girls running, whatever. But that particular lens is a 70 to 200 and it's a 2.8, which is a very fast lens and it's perfect for that shot. Nice. And the wardrobe is very interesting choice. I don't, does that's she her graduation. That? That's her graduation oh, okay. stuff. Yeah. That is cool. Yep. You all, have photos with idea. the graduation cap? Also? Oh, yeah. I got tons of... I mean, that was a whole set we shot. You That's know, so but cool. that was my favorite image I got from from that shoot. Yeah, I can't see many people have a graduation snowboard yeah. set. That's awesome. That's, uh, her name's Taylor. She's actually a um, a host on the 98.7 The Bowl. Nice. Yeah, she's a really cool lady. Yeah, that's so super cool. She lives around Portland? Yep. yep. Nice. Yeah, how often are you taking a sunset? Like every day you try to take one? Anytime I can get out when I have the time mm -hmm. um, and the weather looks good and it's been forecasted to be nice, I will try to go out and shoot a sunset somewhere. Nice. You know, no matter what. Sometimes I'll shoot objects. Like I have a really cool picture that um, is like a tiny little plane and I shot with a macro lens. Yeah. And I don't need to be anywhere cool. It wasn't like a great location, but because the color was pretty behind it, it yeah. made for a really cool image. Yeah, did you plan it out, the bird to be right over the sun? Because that's right. amazing. Just perfect timing, I the guess. The silhouette of that bird? Yeah. Like, totally black. <laughs> Just perfect timing is all and that the, was. The, the layering of the waves, it's like, what do you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. You know, some images are lucky. Some some are planned. You know, mm. most of them are luck. Most of them are just yeah. the right time, the right place. I remember I did a photo shoot in Forest Park and she took like 900 photos and I'm like, I like these 300. <laughs> <That's weird. laughs> yeah, you can, you can take 900 photos, not like one of them. But, yeah. But sometimes, I'll, I, because of my process, I go through after a portrait session, I'll often upload the photos immediately. Mm -hmm. I just did a graduation shoot down at U of, uh, U of O and sending them images in like, yeah. and we shot 460 frames and she like 300 of them. <laughs> that's a good number. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a good one the military and he actually flies the C-17 galaxies for the air shows this year. Nice. And I'm actually going to go up and see him in a couple of weeks. Did you ever want to fly? I did actually. When I was a, um, a, a getting out of high school, I was going to join the ROTC program in yeah. the Navy and become a fighter pilot. And uh, Wow. <laughs> yeah. My significant other at the time wasn't a big fan of that. So Yeah. I, I, was, just, I was just reading up about that because I was watching some World War II docs 
And they said that basically at this point, they're not really at all like doing the fighter pilot thing, you know? Most it's, of it's his over. drone, yeah, most of his drone work. It's crazy. It's just like, I think that's probably lucky though. I mean, it's pretty dangerous. If, uh, yeah, some of these guys are really good at video games. They're going to be the best pilots there are. <laughs> yeah. At this point, I think they just make it drones are going to do that. Yeah. And what's the point if you don't need to be in the, you know, the, the, you know, the plane itself to fly it? Like, why put that person in danger? Yeah. But there is something to be said. So I actually took some pilot training when I was younger. My mom was a flight instructor. Mm hmm. And I'll tell you, there's nothing quite like being in a plane and feeling what the plane is feeling. You know, I, I played video games for a little while in my youth. We talked about that earlier. Yeah. My favorite, some of my favorite games were the the piloting games. And I was good at them, like pretty darn good. Flight Simulator VR. Yeah. Ace Combat was like my my jam. I love that that game. And I was really good at it. Like I thought, oh man, this is like yeah. oh, I suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, totally different. I think you might want to be interested in flying drones and there's like a VR headset that you could put on. So it's basically like flying. Oh, I'd love to get a drone. There's just so many regulations. You don't want to break any rules and laws. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Look out. Some of my favorite shots are the ones where people coastline and they get like, no, or something. oh, less than that. I'll probably pick up a drone next year. Very cool. Yep. So you want to get like professional training stuff? I don't need professional training. You pick yeah. up a drone. Come on. You play video <laughs> games growing up? Right? Yeah, I feel like I can figure this out. You nice. know. But I was looking at the, the DG, uh, DJ Mavic pro uh-huh i know it's 800 i think 800 drone yeah but anyway it's it, it's a good price point for what you get out of it the problem is you crash that one time you just lost however much money you just spent <laughs> exactly and then you're putting a really expensive camera on yeah yeah and not using yeah. the built-in one they have those like programs that like you know you can insure your drone but you know if you don't find it they don't yeah. cover it, i don't think <laughs> Yeah, they don't cover lost. They just cover broken. <laughs> the first episode of this podcast is basically a story about how my friend lost his drone in the ocean. He's like, "There's a one in a million chance that you're getting this back," and he somehow got it back. <laughs> well, uh, I'd buy a lottery ticket that same day. <laughs> right? <laughs> Probably not. My friend Jake just washed his camera in the in the ocean a few uh, a month ago, two yeah. months ago. I felt so bad for him. Like that's like the worst experience ever. Can you imagine like watching your camera just get doused in like a wave? I can't believe it. Yeah, that's three thousand dollar camera. Yeah, see you later, three grand. This is why I don't like to buy things that are that expensive. I, I know that's terrible. Especially taking on the road or something. You're like, oh. if it's at home and it's safe, you're like, okay. How often are you shooting in Seattle? Uh, I've been there probably three times in the last year. Mm. I actually do want to go back um, next month. I always have friends that I like to meet up up there that are well-known photographers, and we like to get together and shoot. Where'd uh, you shoot the eclipse? I went to Colton High School. Nice. And it was the like most northern part of the totality zone. Yep. Uh, which uh, where I was living at the time was only like a half an hour away. So how did you get so the bad. shot? It's hard. So I researched how to get. They call that the diamond ring. Mm -hmm. And I researched. Um, I had my camera settings at 400 ISO, certain aperture with a special filter on. Yeah. And uh, it's just you have a one in a million chance, not one in a million, but, you know, one chance to get it right, you know? Yeah. And I, I just did a ton of research on it. Thanks again to podcasts. Nikon podcast at the time was uh, advertising how to get that shot. Yeah. And so I was watching that. And um, I was with four other photographers and we all got it. Because I, I walked them through the settings on their phone or on their, their cameras. So it was really cool to have everybody kind of walk away. It's actually my most famous shot. It's the first one I ever posted of that. Yeah. Which was, that's the anniversary shot of it. Yeah. Um, if you go to the original one, it had like 5,000 something nice. people had found it. That's awesome. I was at Coffin Mountain. And Experience. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. Um, my grandparents live in Iowa and I'm going back to see them in august but i think they're about two hours from the totality zone from the next one okay which is in 2022 that's awesome you're gonna go there i'm gonna go there absolutely i thought it was 2024 maybe that's what it was either way whatever the next one is yeah definitely gonna go absolutely i want to I I see it. that again that is an incredible experience i agree my brother from new york and my friend from new york is coming tomorrow all they came out just for the eclipse and we did the drive and it was totally worth it they said it, the traffic was going to be worse than it was, and it wasn't that bad. No, we didn't have that bad from going from Colton. That wasn't bad at all. Nice. Did you, man, it seems like you do a lot of LA or California shooting, no? Mm -mm. San Francisco is like my number one spot to go to. Okay. I have a wedding there in October. I'll be going back. I just got back 
um, last month from San Francisco. It's yeah. cheap to fly there. You know, you keep an eye on the airfare specials. True. You know, you can get a round trip ticket for hundred bucks. Yeah, I don't right. know why more people don't take a little trip down there just for fun. Maybe they don't have a place to stay. <laughs> it is true. You know, the one night there is like two hundred dollars for a hotel. It's yeah. not cheap. Where was this dock? So that's a a place between um, Seattle and Bellevue, okay. and it's like a lake. And I tell you, man, that's one of those nights or those mornings you just can't you can't get luckier. The sky was like, please reflect me in the. Lake. It was so calm. <laughs> the texture was so perfect. Yeah, uh, I, I, I still have shots I want to post of that, but I'm sure somebody's getting tired of it at some point. Yeah, it's jaw dropping for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a print worthy. Yeah. Ever get anything in a magazine or anything like that? Um, you know, I was shooting for a local Portland magazine for a little while. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I would love to have Portland magazine feature my work more often they feature it occasionally on their instagram account yeah but i'd love to be in that magazine i think that'd be really cool yeah i think you should tell totally but more that. people are in electronic publications and paper publications anymore yeah that's true that's absolutely true i don't know anyone that has magazines nowadays it's all done yeah it's all done like their you know magazine subscriptions on their ipad or whatever I haven't seen a door to door magazine subscription seller in. I don't think I've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah, in movies and stuff. Like that movie Office Space. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, your photos are, are incredible. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, man. I hope, uh, I hope other people can enjoy them. I certainly enjoy taking and sharing them. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do is interact with people on my Instagram. So, you know, if you've seen this podcast or, you know, you want to interact, you know, if you leave a comment, you better be believe I'm going to reply to it. So nice. Yeah. Engaging on Instagram is super important. I have, yeah. I have uh, friends that are uh, models and photographers alike that don't interact with their people that follow. I'm like, that is not a good way to live. Yeah. These people are following your work, not just because it's beautiful, but because they want to, to know you a little better as a person. Yeah. I think it's like an old school thinking of like, in the 80s and 90s you know celebrities you had no way of contacting them and now you do so it's like why not you know? yeah and they, people always get excited when a celebrity like responds you're like oh yeah. god you know Dwayne the Rock Johnson he replied to my comment <laughs> yeah, best we had back then was they might answer your fan mail one in a million chance yeah and it's probably somebody else doing it for them yeah it's probably the, you know their sister or whatever exactly and now it's like you can have mid-tier celebrities and you can contact them and it's back then it was just like a great celebrity you had you could get on cable tv basically yeah so it's like why not talk to each other and be more social and, and it's a great community out there like people interacting is fantastic agreed all right well i will hopefully check in your work about a year or so and you'll be doing some drone photography and we'll have you back on that sounds good man great all right thank you <laughs>